Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the weather warnings as we still have multiple yellow warnings and one amber warning in force for rain and then we'll have a look at the longer term outlook have a look at the GFS, GM, the ECWF, GFS ensembles and finishing up with the UK Metal Office run as well as it does look like coming Monday 1st of November it does look like we're going to be starting the first week of November really quite cold um with temperatures upper air temperatures at least a good five plus degrees below average now it's not going to be widespread snow or anything but we could be seeing some snow across some some northern areas especially over higher ground and we could be seeing some frosts as well for many so yeah very interesting what's be coming next week so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow on twitter as well the links in description so we do have a look at the live radar you can see at the moment we've got very heavy rain in the west now this is that sort of that weather front that's bringing that sort of conveyor belt of moisture to northwest england southern scotland where we have seen um hundreds of millimeters of rain um that's sort of four six eight inches of rain in a few spots and there's been some quite bad flooding and it has been pretty localized in terms of it mainly has been southern areas of scotland and northern western parts it is starting to sort of ease away there as this weather front progresses eastwards so we're seeing a lot of heavy rain in southwest england now southern wales western parts of the midlands into northwest and northeast england as well and there are yellow warnings and one amber warning in the northwest still intact elsewhere there's still a lot of showers around but this weather front is going to progress northwards and eastwards so that most areas will be seeing some heavy rain over the next few um sort of next 12 to 24 hours but really it's it's still going to be battering this west side and that's why we do have weather warnings in force so we do have a look at those weather warnings you see at the moment a weather warning for rain across southwest england one across western parts of wales one across northwest england and an amber warning still in force for northwest england as well it's from 3 p.m on wednesday yesterday to midnight tonight but it does expire in only about four or five hours time if we have a look at the other yellow warnings you can see this yellow warning um across generally northwest england um is from midnight or mid uh, midnight last night so is it um uh, early this morning all the way to 3 p.m tomorrow um where we could be seeing heavy rain may cause disruption um and we can see uh, further rain during thursday easing for a time in the north but a further spell of heavy rain moving across the area during friday rainfall totals will vary but 20 to 40 millimeters and 50 to 60 millimeters in places or as much as 80 to 180 millimeters plus this is addition to the very high fall rain for rainfall totals across 24 last 24 to 36 hours um where an ample warning does remain in place high impact low likelihood because it all is because of the amount of rain that's fallen over the last few days all going to be totting up to give some very very significant impacts potentially if we have a look at the warning across wales spells of heavy rain will spread southeast which will cause wales through thursday before clearing east through friday so from 6 a.m this morning until 3 p.m tomorrow again 46 millimeters potentially 100 millimeters in a few spots um and again we could see some very heavy bursts with 40 to 60 millimeters in six to nine hours and then finally another warning from 3 p.m this afternoon till 9 a.m tomorrow again 20 to 30 millimeters 50 millimeters in places and as high as 80 millimeters on parts of dartmoor so still a lot of heavy rain around for many and even if you aren't in these yellow warnings you could still see some heavy rain some potentially disruptive rain um, as this does progress eastward so do stay tuned to the met office warnings and the environmental agency warnings as well as there could be some significant downstream effects from this even if you aren't directly in an amber or a yellow warning zone so we do now have a look at the long-term outlook, have a look at this first week, or we'll have a look at this Halloween weekend, and then the first week of November, which is looking pretty chilly. You can see at the moment, low pressure out in the Atlantic, bringing up that sort of southwesterly wind with a conveyor belt moisture, and weather front is going to bring a lot of rain over the next 24 hours. Beyond that, we eventually see this low pressure moving through, more heavy rain across this weekend for many. And then the winds veer to a northerly for the first few days of November. It does stay there for a good 24 to 48 hours with this chilly northerly wind getting quite cold air mass through. And we remain in this chilly north northerly um, wind all the way to around next weekend where we see a brief area of warmer air before another cold polar air mass moves through. And again, we're seeing this northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream, so we're seeing colder air move in behind it. As we get to the uncertain time frame beyond day 10, we do see more of a westerly pattern for another northerly wind moves in. Really quite cold air there 
for the 11th of November. Really quite chilly. Could be seeing snow to even low-lying areas or even southern England in potentially a few showers overnight there. And that cold air mass moves through eventually. And then that low pre- uh, then that high pressure does eventually top. So the GFS is going for pretty cold for the first two weeks of November. Um, so, yeah, very interesting. Just need to stay tuned for this. As I said, through my winter look-aheads, always November, December time has been favoured especially this year with the early stratospheric warming we've been seeing the east gqbo sort of the el nino um so yeah we, we've got to keep an eye really what happens with this again it is probably too early to see anything too significant in terms of wintry weather but we could still see see some snow here or there um and you can't rule it out to low-lying areas at times as well if we do see one of these very cold air masses come through i do suspect the gfs is probably on the colder end of the ensembles but again it is a potential run and we can't rule it out so if you do have a look at the gms here let us compare again that southwesterly wind moving at the moment as we head for the first few days of um uh, november you can see direct northerly wind really quite cold air mass minus five line getting through to scotland and then we see that warmer air come through briefly before we see another colder air mass come through a little bit more flat on the gm which would give more of a westerly theme so milder at times you can still see the heights are trying to rise towards greenland which would give potentially a northerly cold um northerly sort of colder airflow again day 10 is still uncertain um we can only really say reliably what we're going to be seeing out to sort of day seven beyond that is still uncertain so things can change and we'll again have to keep an eye really what happens with these models if we finally have a look at the ecwf see how that does compare again you can see southwesterly winds over the next day or so and then northerly winds move in quite cold northerly plunge um and you can see those winds do move through and then we do see a flattening of the jet stream briefly before at day 10 we see more amplification towards greenland and likely to going into a north or northwesterly airflow once again now if we do go back to the gfs just have a look at the temperature deviation because that's something we always need to keep an eye on um because it does give us um good indication you can see when that northerly wind comes through on the 10th 11th november we are a good eight to ten degrees below average really quite chilly and we remain fairly colder than average all the way from the first few days of november we remain in that blue sort of air mass briefly with the warmer fronts coming through at times potentially going a little bit warmer but still staying with this really quite cold air mass yeah very interesting seeing that so if we do have a look at the gfs ensemble as you can see relatively mild at the moment with the southwesterly winds quite a few rain spikes over the next few days over this weekend as weather fronts push in from the west beyond that temperatures do fall to around or below average for the first of november and then drop below freezing at 850 hpa all the way down to minus three minus four degrees really quite cold and stay cold all the way to around 6th 7th of november when a lot of uncertain details come into play you can see the average of the ensemble stays around the 1981 to 2010 mean but you can see there is a lot of up and down you can see the gfs operational run is a colder run but it's not an outlier there are some that are going much much colder and others just going as cold as it you can see um on the other hand there are a lot more warmer on some members as well going quite mild so again it is uncertain precipitation is down which would be symbolic of more of a northerly airflow drier air masses um and sort of more showery conditions favoring northern coasts so that's it gives us a, a decent idea that of the air mass is going to be maybe a little bit drier at times so yeah very interesting to see what's going to be happening for the, for the first weeks of november if we did see these synoptics with cold northern northwesterly winds every single week we do progress the cold air to our north is getting even colder um so so what is so if we continue with these northerly sort of bouts that we we've been seeing within the um within the operational runs in fact we did see one of those end of november early december you can't rule out it being properly cold with temperatures down to low single digits for all freezing overnight you can't rule that out if we did run this on this sort of pattern on over the next few weeks so we do have a look at glasgow see how that does compare you can see generally 
Mild at the moment then, dropping well below average throughout the first week of November. A lot more uncertainty comes in around 6th of November, a lot more precipitation returns and a lot of scatter, but it generally does look pretty chilly, down to minus 3, minus 4 degrees at entry of THPA around 3rd, 4th of November, and then slowly slowly rising, but staying below average all the way to around 8th, 9th of November, and then again, a lot, a lot of scatter does come in. Some going very cold, sort of um, intersecting with the precipitation spikes, getting down to minus 12, minus 14, Degrees at of THPA, and that is truly going into the freezer. That would be daytime temperatures below freezing. So, yeah, very exceptional runs there. And it does show you we are getting, we're slowly getting to the time of year where there is the possibility of seeing um, widespread cold starting to come in. I'd probably say around the middle of November is the earliest time we could be starting to see anything widely cold. And at the moment, it is just cold, rare masses with a colder feel and that we've got to keep an eye on throughout the first week of November. So we do finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature. You can see at the moment heavy rain pushing in through the west, and that's going to continue over the next couple of days. Briefly dry through Friday evening into the afternoon, but then more heavy rain spreads through uh, through Saturday. Uh, and then Saturday afternoon to evening is quite a showery day, and then more weather fronts push through on Sunday. And then we go northerly with the airflow with colder air coming in from the north, maybe a few wintry showers further north as well. And you can see that weather front pushing through in the south um, with the colder air behind it. If we have a look at the max temperatures, you can see at the moment, uh, the temperatures were around 14, 15 degrees in the south and the east, a bit colder under the rain. Tomorrow, we can see temperatures once again, potentially 13, 14 degrees in the east, but again, under that colder air, um, or under the rain, that air is going to be a little bit colder with only temperatures in 8 or 9 degrees. By Saturday, temperatures peaking maybe 12, 13 degrees, nothing too crazy. And then by Sunday afternoon, we could be seeing temperatures maybe 10 or 11, but the colder air is starting to move in from the north. Seen by Monday in the north, 4, 5, 6, 7 degrees in the south, 10, 11 degrees. By Tuesday afternoon, much, much colder, 7 or 8 degrees in the south, maybe only 4 or 5 degrees in the north, and a few spots maybe touchy or 9 or 10 degrees, but a lot colder with that airflow coming in from the north. So do make sure you keep an eye out for weather warnings if you are anywhere near the heavy rain that we're going to be seeing over the next few days and make sure you stay safe out there don't go for any flood water and don't do anything um, that could endanger you so do keep an eye out for those warnings of course and if you are in flood prone areas do um, make sure you keep an eye out um, for if, if there is going to be any potential flooding or warnings as well next week though it is looking much colder for all nothing amazingly wintry but it is looking pretty chilly indeed and if you are a snow lover these are good signs that we are getting this sort of application of the jet stream we are seeing the the correct synoptics if we were maybe in three or four weeks time we would potentially be seeing something a lot lot colder so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribing you i'll see you again for another video soon